so good morning. Uh, I'm Mike Roy, the President and CEO of Revelation Software. Welcome to the 2010 Revelation Software Users Conference here in, I was going to say sunny and warm Las Vegas. Right now it's uh, sunny and windy Las Vegas. I hope that uh, those of you that were able to attend the cocktail party last night were only figuratively blown away and not physically blown. Um, if you were there, uh, you know what I'm talking about. I think, is Alexander here? Alexander Holiday actually had, because we're all geeks here, a little wind measuring device. And I think we got gusts up, up to 45 miles an hour while we're standing on the roof with, with alcohol in our hands. So it was a good mix for uh, Las Vegas. Thanks very much for coming. I know what it's like to show up at one of these shows, what it costs, and, and time and effort, including in this economy, you know, the phrase that we'll use a couple times. Uh, we have over the next two and a half days, probably 20 sessions dealing with what's going on new in Open Insight between what we've put into our product ourselves and what some of our vendors have done as add-ons. Uh, you'll be taught by some of the best minds, I hope, in the Revelation world, either from our staff, I said, or uh, other speakers from the various companies. We have our vendor fair and exhibit uh, tomorrow evening, which is a change. Usually we do the vendor fair the night of the first uh, day of the conference. However, this year we're going dinner to show. Uh, we're going to do dinner and movie, but we couldn't figure out anything everybody would like. So uh, we're going to the Penn and Teller show. They're irreverent, they're very funny, they're very fast. They will actually show us, we've seen the show once before, they've changed it, but they'll actually show us how they do the trick, you know, like a cup and ball trick, and they get see-through cups, and they show you the ball, and you still can't figure it out. So it's kind of like, you know, building indexes. How does it work? Well, it just does. Don't ask. <laughs> uh, hopefully over the next couple days, we'll have some fun with networking. I saw this morning, you know, everybody around the tables talking. Uh, I think that we find out a lot more when we actually get to work face to face. And I've done all sorts of talks where I've actually been talking to people with people in front of me, talking at a table, or doing the virtual sort of talks with the webinars and things like that. I'm always much happier when I actually get to see the people that I'm talking to, because you can see you know, the facial cues, you can see the smile, you can see the hesitation, so you can get a better idea of where you're going and what's going on, what ideas are hot, what ideas, you know, oh, it was a great idea. You know, when you see that face, I'm saying a great idea. Mm -hmm. That's not a great idea. So between the networking and the idea exchange for the next few days, hopefully this will be worth your time. So, since last we were here in our Revelation conference, a couple things have happened in the world, uh, you may have noticed. Uh, there was this recession thing. Um, we sub we uh, stumbled through. We have not been hurt, I think, as badly as everyone, but it still hurt. Uh, I'm sure everybody here has their own stories. We all have friends that got laid off two years ago and are still looking for jobs. Um, but we're still here, you know. There is a, uh, I forget who said the phrase, but there's a phrase that tough times don't last, tough people do. And I would say the same thing, that tough times don't last, tough businesses do. And that we have made it through a bunch of storms. I mean, some of the people here have been working with Revelation or multi-value products for 30 odd years. So obviously, we're doing something right. And hopefully we can continue to do so in the future. And we'll do what we can on the tool side to make sure that we keep you guys as up to date as you want to. But it doesn't really matter to us. What matters to us is what our customers are doing, how our customers are doing, and how we can keep them going better. The unemployment numbers we already talked about. We have some volcanoes. We had some serious concerns that some of our presenters would not be here this week because they're coming from the UK. Uh, you saw the windstorms blowing through here last night and all the dust. I'm expecting we might have some locusts or frogs before Friday lunch. So um, we'll see what we can do about that. Any other ideas you guys might have? You know, 2012, maybe that movie was right. Uh, we'll see. The only thing I'm worried about is 2029 because we have an Ogon B issue. So we should have that fixed by 2028 or so. <laughs> So what's going on with Revelation Software right now? We continue to do well. Um, we uh, actually made money last year. We didn't have to lay anybody off. Uh, none of those bad things happened. We did, you know, we stopped our travel a lot. Uh, our advertising dropped down. We didn't go to some shows that we normally go to. We didn't do all the same cutbacks that everybody else did. Um, but we were able to hold on. We did okay. We had some staffing changes. We hired uh, Eric Smith and Jared Branton. Now you may have talked to these guys on the phone, on tech support, you may have seen them here. Uh, they'll be giving talks this day. When we hired these two guys, I'm pretty sure that we lowered the average age of uh, Revelation staff by 22 years. <laughs> what was really neat about hiring these guys is that we brought them into a technical, you know, they took technical spots, and these are guys who grew up in Windows. 
Like I grew up watching Star Trek, so I expected my computer was going to be about this big, you know, sitting on the thing, it was going to talk to me, which I'd always been disappointed about. And I put in something like a three-inch floppy drive, and that's how I was going to work with computers. You know, I sold war games, you know, used to type in and stuff like that. Uh, these guys are just used to a GUI interface, a graphical interface, going from the day they started. So when Eric started, he took the intro course we gave him and brought him up to speed and some stuff, and he says, so, you know, when you, when you do one of these, why do you do that? And we said, because we always do it that way. It was great having a fresh perspective, a new set of eyes that looked at the stuff and said, um, you can do some different things here. This doesn't look right. It doesn't act the way that other applications do. And those were a lot of the driving forces that actually went into the new IDE and the clean and the screens getting cleaner and more tight, uh, which you see in the product right now. So it's been fun putting there. Jared has put, uh, come up with these testing suites for either our network products and then for actual products itself, which is doing more beating on the products than we've been able to do before because of experience he has with some automated test procedures and just the way that he thinks. So the time you guys see it in beta, it's actually been through a lot more testing than we've been able to do in prior versions. So hopefully it's, you know, we're left with a $6 million man, but I'm better, faster, stronger. So we think that the software is getting there now. Another fun thing we've seen very recently is a lot more ARF32 conversions. Now you guys know that we have, about two years ago, three years ago, we took all the ARF source code, recompiled it in Windows. So even though it looks and it acts just like ARF, it's really 32-bit Windows behind the scenes. Well, the economy, that, which appears to be ticking up, and we're seeing this in a couple different ways, uh, a number of sites are apparently reviewing their RevG systems, their ARev systems, and, and discovering it doesn't work on you know, a Windows machine that might be 25 years older than their original operating system. Uh, their printers don't work anymore. So we've actually been doing a lot more ARev32 conversions, and there's a fairly steady stream of those. And it's, it works out well for both of us. It works out well for us as Revelation, because we sell more seats, it works out well for the users because uh, when we do these conversions, we, they download it to us on an FTP site. We run it through our converting tool. We say, okay, here, you can take it as is or it runs really well or it needs lots of work. What do you want to do with it? Uh, so it's been happy all around. People get what they want. The software works and everybody's happy. Theoretically. Um, okay, so since 2008, we've had a bunch of releases of the software. Um, 9.0 is probably the biggest one. I think that we were just going into beta with 9.0 when we were here the last time. Uh, we've had the new IDE, uh, we had the WebY in there, we had the new editor, a bunch of brand new stuff we put in that product. Uh, a 9.1 patch, a 9.1.1 patch, and then 9.2 that's inside of beta right now. Uh, we have, the, in 9.0, one of the big things that we introduced was new licensing, where it's a flat price per seat. You get the network products built in automatically, you get the upgrades automatically, and there's the annual license renewal. The annual license renewal is foreign to us Revelation users because we came from the PC world where when you bought the software, you owned it forever. And the world has just changed. I mean, the, we designed the prices for the annual license renewals to be less than what it costs to renew your antivirus software. So the point that we would make that if someone is willing to pay that just to keep the bugs off their machine, wouldn't they be willing to pay less than that to keep their database going? And, you know, there's pros and cons of the arguments, I'm not going to get into it here. Uh, some people have decided to disagree with me, and we decided to disagree. Um, but that was probably the biggest thing in 9.0 from a non-technical point of view. In all the technical stuff, I think that we had shown at that conference, we'll be showing uh, today as well. <clears throat> the uh, network products, we'd updated those as well. Probably the biggest change there is that uh, if you have one of the newer network products, the UD4.6 or the UD Heavy 4.6, uh, the biggest thing is that you can go to the server go and see who's has locks. You can see what record is locked, you don't have to reboot the server, you don't have to kill the service. If someone has something locked, you know they're not locked in, you can actually refresh the lock. So from an administration point of view, the, the 4.6 product was uh, much, uh, much improved over the 4.5 stuff. So getting the world out, getting the world out. It seems like I'm getting the world out sometime with all the, the time I spent in aircraft. Uh, but how do we keep telling people about what's going on with Revelation? Well, we have these conferences, pretty cool. Uh, we do our roadshows, and I love doing the roadshows. Uh, we do them in the U.S., the U.K., Australia, and New Zealand. We um, 